Hello everybody, <clears throat> today, today is day nine of Conspiracy Grotesco, and um, today we are in Teatro Grotesco, and we are reading, um, oh, 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 The Red Tower. Um, this story... Is kind of unlike any story that I could think of and if if you have read this or even if you decide you're not going to read this book and you hear my description of everything and can think of a story that elicits that same feeling please let me know because I feel like I've never read anything like The Red Tower before. And every time I read it, I end up reading it over and over again. And um, I don't know why. Um, I think it's to see if I get the same feeling. Um, and I do. Like... Um, I was reading it last night. Um, I, I've read it like five or six times in the last 24 hours. And I was reading it last night. I was in bed reading it. And it's just a very mundane story, almost like a report. And you're reading it, and then you get to this last monster paragraph. And all of a sudden, everything that felt so mundane and what have you um turns and you realize what you've been reading and you're like struck full of terror to the point where you go like like you're sitting there reading the or I was I'm like and then I'm like Like, I'm totally, like, looking around, like, going, whew, okay, ah, coast is clear, I guess I could try to go to sleep, um, but the story is, um, it's this guy, um, giving you the history of this thing called the Red Tower, which is this factory in the middle of nowhere, this red brick factory that's surrounded by just like this gray wasteland of utter desolateness, okay? There's nothing there. It's just gray. And this big red structure comes out of it. Um, and it gives the, the illusion that this is like obscene, this structure in the middle of this um, gray nothingness. And he goes on talking about how strange it is because it's this factory and there's no roads to get to it, but even if there were roads to get to it, <clears throat> when, you, when you would get there, you would find that there's no entrance to the factory. There's no doors. There's no... Um, loading bay, um, there's not even windows until you get up to like where the second floor of the factory is. And then he goes on, um, and if you are going to read this and you don't want spoilers, stop the video now. Thank you for coming. It's very sweet that you stopped by and, um, you could come back after you read it. So... He is talking about how crazy this is and how he was kind of bummed out when he found out that there were subterranean tunnels and things leading to the factory. So that kind of like squashed the illusion of this being like completely bizarre. <clears throat> now it's just sort of bizarre. And uh, he's talking about it. And um, 
going on and on saying how the purpose of the Red Tower were it was to build these novelties um, and mass produce these novelties. Then he starts talking about what the novelties are, and you're like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, um, little knickknacks, little tchotchkes that um, are a lot heavier than they look. And you're like, oh, classic. Um, then he goes further, and he's like, um, like severed hands that the fingernails grow overnight. And if you cut them, the fingernails will just keep growing back. And you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Um, and then he's like, diseased organs that um, look really diseased. And when you touch them, they're like really warm and soft. And it's really unsettling and disgusting. And you're like, uh-huh. And then, like, I don't know why this is my favorite one, but my favorite one is um, a hunk of concrete that could come off of any sidewalk anywhere in the country. But wherever you leave it, it's going to leave this really nasty, green, greasy stain on whatever you put it on. And you're like, what the fuck is he talking about, right? And you're <clears throat> you're just along for the ride. He's just giving you like the history of this... Um, like old factory that's not in use now and um all the windows are broken the bricks are all falling apart he thinks that maybe at one point the bricks weren't red that it was the same color as the landscape um and one day for some reason um all of the machinery in the factory evaporated just like that and left like almost like residue of like where they were almost like I picture it like um like a nuclear flash or something where like you you could see your shadow like burned into the wall behind you or something I picture that with all the machinery and then he was saying that and then he found out that um, there wasn't just like a subterranean level of tunnels. There were levels. <clears throat> and on the second level, um, there was this thing <clears throat> that looked like a graveyard. Um, two levels underneath the building. But the graveyard had all these tombstones, but none of the tombstones had any writing on them. And in fact, it wasn't a graveyard it was a birthing yard for these, um, I always forget how he says it, for these hyper-organisms. Okay. So, there are these hyper-organisms that are being birthed down below the Red Tower. And, um, then he starts saying, and then he realized that there was a, a third level. And the third level was there, he thinks, to kind of be a mirror image to the Red Tower factory above the ground. And um, he just goes on and on explaining this to you. And you're like, oh, this sounds like a very strange factory. I wonder where it is. And all this shit... And here comes the big fucking kick you in the balls moment. He's like, you know, I haven't seen the Red Tower. You know, I'm just telling you what I've heard. In fact, no one has seen the Red Tower. Like, the Red Tower has never been seen by human eyes or whatever. Like, I just hear about it. And this is all I've heard of the Red Tower. And I'm assuming I will soon hear more of the Red Tower once it becomes operational again. And when I hear these voices talking about the Red Tower, I will be able to report back more about the Red Tower. And he keeps saying the Red Tower, the Red Tower. And you realize that, like, the narrator of this story is just fucking crazy. And 
None of this is real. Or is it real? I don't know. Do you know? You don't know. But none of this is a thing. Like, no one has seen this thing. He's just telling you about the things that he's heard about it from these voices that talk to him about the Red Tower so he could write to you and tell you about the Red Tower. Okay, if this isn't, like, unsettling to you, like, I don't know why the fuck it is. It's unsettling to me, and I don't get it. I just don't understand it. But I was, like, <gasps> like, totally gasping. Like, I was, like, oh, my God. Every time I fucking read this thing, it, it does this. Like, you're reading it, and you're, like, Jesus fucking Christ, the Red Tower, the Red Tower. Fuck me, fuck, oh, my God, the Red fucking Tower. And then it's just, like, boom. And you're terrified. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand how <clears throat> somebody can take something, write it in a way to where I'm almost bored, and then without a jump scare, okay, because that's what we're used to, without anything like that, just words that aren't descriptive words, he's just saying no one's ever seen it. These are the most undescriptive words of any words that have ever existed, saying that there is no description, okay? This is like the kind of shit that people used to get mad at H.P. Lovecraft for, but he's doing it right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, he is telling you a story about a thing that no one's ever seen. Not It's not even like he saw it in a dream and is telling us about it. He's just oral history being passed down, okay? And it's fucking terrifying every time. And I would like to read that last paragraph, but that's like... That's not the hook, but that's why you read the pages that precede it, you know? So, I don't know. It's just, it's another one of these great stories in this fucking book. And I know... <sighs> I was talking about it in my Discord chat um, with some people just now. And it was like... I was saying how, like... It's so, like, refreshing for me to find a writer. Because I haven't just stumbled upon him, but I only stumbled upon him within the last year. And to find a writer that I feel like almost like understands me as a reader at least. And it's just so refreshing. But at the same time, reading a writer that I believe understands me might not be a good thing because I'm being taken for rides on levels which I'm not familiar with because most writers have never been able to do this to me before. Um, and I would have thought that after reading this once that the thrill would be over, the thrill would be gone, um the terror, the shortness of breath, the racing of my heart, that all this stuff would be like old hat, you know? But it's not. It's like... I don't know what the fuck it is. It's almost like hypnosis or something. But anyway, <clears throat> so if you're not like... If you're not sold on Ligotti, I don't know if there's anything I could say that could sell you on Ligotti. If you have read Ligotti and you're like, I don't get it, I'm not into it, then there's nothing I can say. But it's kind of like one of these things, like be careful what you wish for, because these things don't go away. They don't leave your head you know, like, and especially if you just keep reading them over and over again, they're going to drive you fucking crazy. So, um, <clears throat> but Hey, that's a fucking, uh, problem for my therapist, right? So, um, let's roll with that. So tomorrow, whoo, oh my gosh, tomorrow in 
conspiracy against the human race. We are doing blundering, analogies, life principles, and undoing part three. So um, that'll be fun. <clears throat> I will have the entire list of day-to-day um, -day reading down below. And um, yeah, until next time, um, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.